All right, let's take a look at how to actually set up a bar if you want something custom. So at the heart of the bar is the bar progress bar script. Um, this one is the one you'll um, attach in your code to change the value. It will then uh, adjust all the view things. Um, we'll get back to it in a second, but what it has here is it has a bunch of animation settings. There's a lot of visual settings that are possible, but they're all not in the progress bar, but in what was called view components. Um, so in this case, there's two view components which have already been added to the progress bar, which we can look at because they're attached to the bar right here. So this is, there we go, this is this specific bar graphic. Mm -hmm. You can see it has a um, an image slash mirror, which is a new component based on the image, which um, uh, uses a different uh, technique to behave when uh, images get really, really small. And then it has the view size anchors and the view color script. What the view size anchors do is actually just uh, changing the anchor. You can already see it's, it's locked up here uh, based on the on the value of the bar. So if we look at this and we change the value, you can see the stretches and it stretches by changing the anchors. You could have a similar effect by using the fill value of, um, of an image, but then you wouldn't get this nice um, sliced effect where the the roundedness is being moved as the image is stretched. Oh, so that's why the image size, um, image size, view size anchors are there. You can set the fill type. You can set discrete steps, which means it's always going to move in fixed numbers. We can take a look at the difference of that real quick. So, if we if we go normal, you can see it always smoothly. If we go discrete steps, you can see it goes all, always in fixed steps. Um, we can change right to left. We could change uh, top to bottom, but it's probably going to look a little bit iffy. Um, and we can change bottom to top, which is also going to look a little bit iffy. You notice that it doesn't adjust the, um, the, the pivots of the axis. It's not moving. So since I am uh, have changed to vertical movement uh, when it was at this size, um, it'll stick it'll keep the pivot, uh, the anchors for X intact while it's only moving the anchors for Y. It's something you might want to um, use if, you, if your bar has specific anchors on one axis. Let's go back to left and right, and you see again the Y axis isn't being moved. We can fix this when we stop playing, because it's, it's the default. So that's the view size anchors. Next one is the view color. Um, as you can see, it's got a default color set here, which is just a red. We can change that to anything we want and have it change color. Notice that it's not changing the color of the image, but rather changing the color of the canvas renderer. So if you change the color of this, both of these things are sort of added on top of each other, as you can see. So in general, you want the image to be white. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because of, uh, for a bunch of reasons, because that way um, we can override color and we can use gradients and stuff. So this is one flag, speaking of override color, that's the override color um, boolean. Um, this is basically when you go to the bar itself and you say set bar color. It's a method that's available in the progress bar pro. Um, then it's going to override the color of every uh, uh, view color component that it has can override color set. Generally, you only want this on your bar or like on very specific things. So keep that in mind. Um, next to the default color is also the gradient which as you can see, um, already changes the color of the bar based on its position along the gradient. So it's not applying a gradient to the bar itself, which is something you can use the image itself for, but rather it's recoloring the bar based on its position. Uh, this is something really neat, especially if you want a specific effect and you, want, you don't want soft movement, you want hard movement, you can open up the gradient settings and change it from blend to fixed. And as you see, um, it sort of changes um, from from smooth blending to actual fixed numbers, which then gives you a sort of a fixed oh god warning effect. Oh god, it's getting red. You know, if you want this, um, this is a sort of option. Another thing you can have is, as you've already seen in action, is the flash uh, uh, effects, flash and gain and flash and loss. Uh, you can see um, when I move the bar, you ha always have this short white flash. You can increase the flash time. Let's just make it to one second to be really obnoxious. And you can change the flash color. Let's just go with black. For, for one of them, which is the gain. So you can see the gain going black. It looks a little bit ugly, but it's fine for demonstration purposes. And you can decide whether it should only flash on one option. So uh, we wanna only want to flash on loss because on gain, we don't need that. So that's the color options. These are pretty useful and have a wide variety of, um, of possible outcomes for you. 
So that's that. Now let's look at the more more advanced bar, which has more than just a bar component. Um, but it's sim it's a similar one. Let's just go open the bar fancy. So here you can say, see already see there's a bunch more game objects. So we start out with the bar. We already have the bar. Then we have this edge thing here, which is just the the light element at the back. And there's a little trick here because I want this to be only visible um, when the bar is not at this maximum or its minimum. So to do that, I actually have a gradient that has a sort of alpha fade out at the very end. Um, so that the bar then fades out towards the end and only becomes visible while the bar is sort of halfway done. So that's a little trick I used here. Then you have these two elements called shadow gaining and shadow loss. And if we look at them, uh, they use the view size anchor shadow, which is a variation of the view size anchor. Where, where do we have that there? Of the view size anchors. What it does is it doesn't use the actual size of the bar, uh, but the target size of the bar. And there's two different shadow types, so the fill type, discrete steps, and num steps are the same as the view size anchor, but there's a new option called shadow type, and which is either gaining or losing. And this just tells it whether it should be visible um, when you're gaining, when the bar is gaining, or when it's losing. And you can see there's two different shadows here. One is for gaining, one is for losing. The gaining one is behind the bar, um, so the bar can cover it as it grows, and the losing one is in front of the bar, so it's displayed on top of the bar to kind of show um, the shadow as, a, as an overlay. You can see them both being some semi-transparent black or dark versions. Uh, so you can see now this one's growing and this one's. See they, which one is activated when I click. So these are the the the, um, the shadow options for the view size anchor shadow. And then there's the uh, view value text, which what it does, um, it changes the associated text, which you can give in here, um, and sets it based on the value of the bar. Since the bar value is always from 0 to 1, um, but you usually want something else displayed here, you can send a min value and max value within which it's going to be animated. So as you can see, it's currently animating from 0 to 100, but if I set it to like 20 and 200, you'll see that it moves, and if the bar is empty, it's going to say 20, and if the bar is full, it's going to say 200. I can force it to so show decimals, a specific amount of decimals, if I want to. Um, I can always show a max value if I want to, which is always be separated with a, with a dash. Um, I can add a unit, let's just call this HP, which is then displayed on both of them. If I want a space in front, I can just add a space in front of HP. And I can add a suffin, suffix, uh, I'm just going to remove the max value. It's going to go left, help, and I can add a prefix, which is sort of added in front and afterwards. So I'm going to space again. So now you see it's sort of has a more advanced text stuff in there. And that's the view value. Um, let me just look what else I forgot because there's a bunch of other components. Let me just move that over here. A bunch of other components that do the view stuff. All right, we have color while moving, which I'm gonna show you um, as well. So this is meant if you want to some sort of highlight the bar while it's being animated. Um, it's different from the edge because the edge is permanently visible when the bar is half filled, whereas the uh, view color while moving is only so shown when the when the bar bar is moving. So let's put it, put something new in there. Let's give it the sort of glow thingy here that I have, and put it at the right edge of the bar because we know that's where it's gonna gonna go. Make it a little bit hard, larger, just sort of vertical thing. Oh, this is ugly. Let's just go with this and add the. Color while moving. View color while moving. So there you go. See a sort of color static, which we're gonna set to um, transparent white, and a color while moving, which we're just gonna set to proper white. We have a blend on time, a blend on stop, and we're gonna set the graphic to the image we have here. So now for this to work, we need to go to the bar and tell it that this is a component it actually needs to care about. So we click on detect view components, and then see um, shadow losing has no wait. That's, just, that's the image has been added. I didn't even name this thing properly. Let's just call it glow effect. Um, so now you can see while it's moving, it so shows this glow, and when it's done, it hides the glow. This is sort of um, just a sort of a highlight thing you might want to use. There's one of the prefabs that uses it. That's why it's been added. I thought it was sort of a neat thing to do. So what else do we have? 
we have a po view path image fill and the view size image fill, which we're gonna look at in a second. The volley text. Oh, we got the view path anchors. Yeah. So something we can do if we want to have like, um, um, so one thing you can do if you want to position something is you can have it a child of the object and then use like anchor it relatively to the object. So for example, our glow effect is anchored to the edge of the bar by being a child of the bar. Yeah which you can see. You can use another option, uh, which is the uh, view pass anchors. So this, let's just give it the right direct transform here, um, can again set, be set to the right, to the same thing as the, the bar is set. And what it then does, it positions the object so that it is um, at, the, um, at, the, at the bar, at the, at the target position for the bar. So let's uh, go look at it. Oh, it's not, oh, yeah, right. I need to add it to the bar because I'm not very clever. There you go. It's been added. And now you can see sort of moving along. This is just another convenient thing. You can do it either way. Um, it's mainly been added because for the images, for the image fill uh, options, you kind of need, need a sort of component if you want something positioned at the edge of the image. All right, so that's that. Um, then let's look at the image components, which are actually working on the image fill. I'm just gonna go stop this and lose all the changes. Go to the bar simple. Um, go back to the bar and remove the view size anchors and take this changes to filled. You'll see that this it's now being a little bit ugly because that's just how filled images work. They don't have a sliced option, so slice fill, which is why the size via anchors is there. But we're, we're going to use it for demonstration purpose, so it's fine. So we're going to go with view size image fill. Um, and it again has discrete straps and num steps, just like the uh, view size anchors had. But what it does now, it, it changes this value as the bar is adjusted. Let's just go to the bar, detect the components, and are they there? And you can see if I change the value of the bar, I change the fill of the image, which is pretty simple, but since this doesn't affect the anchors, if I want something positioned on the edge, let's say, like the edge thing here, let's just get that in here, um, I may want to use the view size, uh, view pass image fill, which if I give the reference image of the bar, then allows me to position this thing along the, along the edge. Again, detect the component, see how it does, hopefully everything works fine. No, everything doesn't work fine because I did something wrong, I guess. Let me just see, yeah, because there's an offset here which we don't want. We want this like like so, like 50, uh, I don't know, 80? Uh, yeah, that's more like it. So now you can see it moves along with the bar, um, even though the bar size doesn't change. So that's something useful you might want to do. Um, this also takes um, the type of fill of the image, so it also works with rotational fills. Um, let me look at this. Let me pull up a prefab from the project and show you real quick. I'm going to do a circle here. Let's take the circle simple. Uh, so this one actually has it in place. So here you have um, a simple circle, which you can animate. But you also have this white sort of circle on the edge of the of the fill. Um, we have the, the bar, which is using this image and using a, a fill amount to sort of show how much, where, where it goes, and a, a color to do a sort of gradient on it, and lots of tiny things. We have the text in the middle, which again uses the view, view value text with a number unit of percentage. And we have the handle, which is this white thing here um, that moves along with the, with, the, with the bar. And it again, it uses the view pass image fill, has a reference to the image. And it knows that the target image is a circular image, and then uh, has a circular fill, and then positions itself accordingly. Note that the view plus image fill doesn't currently work with 90 degree and 180 degree fill, uh, circular fill. It only works with a 360 degree fill, but um, that was something I'll eventually add. Also notice there's something called offset, which now suddenly starts to make sense um, because um, you may want to position this on the ring, but you don't know exactly where it is. So what offset does is um, tells it how far it needs to go outside uh, along the on, along the axis, it isn't moving along automatically. So you can see I'm just sort of tweaking this around until I get it just right. It's a little bit more, yeah. And you can see now we're doing can be just a tiny bit more. 
yeah now it's looking good and it's riding along the edge of the thing um, if we go all the way to the middle it's just basically not doing anything because it's sitting in the middle if you go all out to the edge it's moving along the edge of the image um which is sort of let's just look at the scene you see it's sort of on the on the outer edge here and would move along there and that's generally this pretty much all there is to it, I think. I should have looked at all the view components. Let me just double check. View call, call by moving, pulse anchors, image fill, anchor shadow, image fill, and view value text. Yeah, that was all of them. So I hope that gave you a good overview of how um, the components are put together and how you can use them to make your own bars. Yeah, that's it.